The city car modernization project continues. Today, my motor came in. That's like the biggest part of it. Ah, oh, that motor I've been waiting. That, there's a lot with that motor. <laughs> That's the heart of everything here. Uh, the motor's supposed to be faster by uh, 1,000 RPM, so I'm going from 4,000 up to 5,000. 5, uh, it's still the same voltage, 48 volts. Um, when I was talking to the engineer who was making this, he said uh, some people do set them up to go 72 volts, but you'll need some force cooling. I do have a force cooling system in the city car. Uh, I just don't know how I'm going to hook it up to this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll figure something out. Uh, right now I'm missing my forward and reverse switch. It'll go between these two. And I have this set up kind of like a squished as it would be in the car, I think. Uh, but I've laid out all of my wires I think I'm gonna need. Like I have these three short ones that are gonna flip between poles and stuff from the forward and reverse switch. And you have the motor controller, which sends a pulse. It's always gonna be 48 volts or zero volts, nothing in between. But it'll, it'll be a pulsed signal with high frequency based on um, how far down this uh, pop box or accelerator pedal is pushed down which uh sends a signal to here saying hey i pushed it like a third of the way um this pop box also has a separate switch on it that will throw the um it will activate the solenoid for that main contactor and that main contactor is where the power comes in for that motor controller to supply to the motor uh we have a fuse that comes before that contactor so you know if we have some dangerous current coming up around if, if there's a short or something we have a safeguard in place uh, before that I have the battery disconnect switch so uh, if the fuse breaks I can disconnect the power and not worry about things uh, that's gonna be very handy for a lot of reasons uh, I have a lot of issues trying to <laughs> disconnect this right now and and being scared of certain things, but, uh, you know, you have to do them. Uh, but this should get rid of uh, all the, the sparks and stuff. All right, so uh, I have some cables here laying across the top. That's because these are both 48 volts. I'm going to be connecting those in parallel. There's two more to connect two more batteries in parallel. And I have this cable. I need to run two cables across for the positive and negative to go in parallel. Um, Main positives coming off on this side, main negative will, will come off on this side. Uh, basically, when you're setting up parallel, you want the path from your main points to have the same resistance no matter what battery you go in. I could have had both the positive and negative over here for, for convenience of you know wire management, but that would mean one of these batteries would have the lowest resistance because wire length also counts as your resistance. So you gotta think about that. Okay, so we have some BMS uh, systems on it. Well, BMS, as is systems, uh, battery ma management systems on top of the uh, lithium cobalt, lithium ion, whatever you wanna call it. Well, they're advertised as lithium ion. And then the, uh, the charger that the guy sells is advertised as lithium cobalt. So my assumption is that either the both the same or similar or have the same charging profiles. Uh, so that next comes into the charger. And I'll probably, I think I have to do this, something similar in how the charger is wired up to battery main and negative as well. Uh, right now I'm missing the zero to J772 adapter. So right now it's plugged directly into main power. Uh, but once I get the adapter, I can plug it into my EVSE and also go to public charging stations. All right, so, oh, and here's the 12 volt system from last night. You can see it's got the five amp buck converter, which I have ordered another one because that one blew up pretty much. Uh, very bad instructions. I forgot the instructions weren't exactly right and forgot which way was which was the correct way anyway here is a fuse block and then I have that set up for both the um, 
a little radio there in the uh, amp. <laughs> uh, and then the radio connects to the amp and connects to my front speakers. So, yeah, let me show you what's what I'm actually replacing in the old motor. So, you can see for fun. So, here's all the batteries. You can see there's actually more room over here than here. This is all squished in. So I'm gonna have more room to put more stuff in there. Uh, you can see this vent coming out. That's the force cooling or, well, it's more than just force cooling. That is my heater and my defroster as well. It's just uh, back in 76, they didn't have 12 volt accessories that could do that kind of stuff. And so they relied on the heat of the motor to, to help you out with that. Uh, in fact, <laughs> these are all just manual. Watch this. Uh, see that? <laughs> That's all manual. There's flaps in that tube that control, like if you're in defrost or heater mode. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> fun, fun stuff. All right. Uh, there's a speedometer cable out here, which I don't know what to do about because the other guy does not have anywhere. He doesn't even have a hole. Check that out. He's capped off. There's no hole for a speedometer cable. And I can't even put a Hall effect sensor to, to detect the RPMs. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is uh, either do something with the wheels to record how fast they're spinning, or what I'll probably end up doing is getting a, a GPS speedometer in there. And I, I guess that'll be more accurate because th this thing's off by like three miles right now. It was off by four miles, but I inflated my tires to the correct pressure and, and that fixed it a little bit. Uh, the charger is up in the front there, which I gotta pull out. That, that isn't working exactly right. I'm gonna have to pull out the accessory battery uh, just because I now have 12 volts running all the time. So all this comes out. I'm gonna use these batteries for uh, a solar charge controller. So, or I'm gonna have a solar EVSE right outside the house. So these will actually be charged up and waiting for me uh, while, I, while I go gallivanting in the vehicle and come back and charge by the sun, just because I can. Um, these are the motor controller. Actually, it's more than just that. So the main contactor switch that was sitting on top of that blue thing, there's that solenoid that makes the switch go. Then there's that flat blade fuse. Is there, it, this is the fuse in this car right now. Or is it this one? I think that's the fuse. Yeah, because that's got to be the fuse. Uh, this is the voltage regulator. This says either send in uh, 24 volts or 48 volts. Uh, pretty much it changes how these are wired up in series or um, in parallel with 24 volt, 24 volts. This is your forward and reverse controller. You can see that little crisscross pattern there. And I'm not sure where it might be part of this, but there's something that actually controls that first gear. So that first gear comes into play. See that coil right back there? Uh, when it's in 24 volts, uh, a good portion of that voltage is burned off and that resistor is heat. Uh, so that's one thing I don't want to do is be wasting energy just to go slow. Uh, right now I have all my chargers set up. So these are lead acid battery chargers for 12 volts each uh, because I do have that accessory battery in the front there. So I do need a fifth one. Uh, right now I'm just plugged into the house, but I do have this uh, step down transformer. So I can go down to uh, 120 volts, which uh, then I just connect my power strip into that because all these there's our power strip for all the charge controllers uh the special thing about this is there we go we've got a public access point charge thing so that's that j1772 uh as it stands i can pull into a public charge controller with this vehicle and uh charge so it's, it's definitely doable it's gonna be slow um i think i get somewhere between 
a half mile and three quarters of a mile per hour. But given that's like really close to the edge of my range, uh, I think it would be desperately welcomed to get that extra kick to get back home. So yeah, that is the, uh, that's the whole project there. Oh, and the uh, that pedal, the accelerator, I'm keeping the pedal, but I think I can remove the springs and the switches. So you can see right now, I'm sure you can see there, can't really see it, but there's actually three switches. Yeah, you can't see that. <laughs> But there's just three switches that go on and off that control those contactors in the back. Um, so those are going to be swapped out. And the pop box has quite a bit of tension on it, so I don't need the springs in the car anymore for the throttle. Now, this does have a user mode. So what I'm going to try and do is I like the wonkiness of switching between the, the first, second, and third speed on this. I'm gonna see if I can set up that user mode to uh, replicate what this did. So I can flip between the original wonkiness and the gradual acceleration of, of that pedal. So, yep, yep, that, that's about it. So that's the, that's the city car for you.